Okay, here are five ways to speed up your color workflow inside DaVinci Resolve. And these are all things I wish I knew when I first switched over to DaVinci. So let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna look at here is remote grades. So if we dive into this timeline a little bit, so if you take a look at these clips, they're cut up, but they're all from the same source. So this clip, this clip, and this clip is all from one recording and same thing with this. So instead of starting your grade on one clip and then copying it to the next clip and then copying it to the next clip, you can use remote grades. Let's hop over into the color page and much like a lot of the things with DaVinci, you have to have this set up at the beginning of your project. All I'm gonna do is right click on the clip and I'm gonna say use remote grades. And you can see the grade that we had was already gone, but you can see this little pink icon here connecting this clip to this one and this one. Yeah, and it just kind of keeps going and going. You can see this will eliminate you having to copy and paste. So let's dive to literally any one of these, go back to use local, and because I've already graded this, I'm going to come up here and click copy local grades to remote. So it just swapped everything from the local clip grade now to the overall remote grade. So now if we do something to one, let's just uh, make a drastic temperature change here. You can see everything that's linked. So you only have to color grade once. This is something that's super helpful for cut up clips uh, like A roll or, you know, scenarios like this where you're chopping up some B roll throughout. This is something I wish I knew right off the bat when I opened DaVinci. Okay, so here's one I don't use a ton, but I feel like uh, has a pretty specific use case and comes in handy where it needs to. So let's say in this scenario that across all these clips, we kind of want the green to be a little bit more vibrant. So we're gonna come up here and select some of the green. Okay, so maybe not uh, an excellent grade, but you can definitely see what's happening here in the trees. And let's say we wanna bring this to every single clip, but just this green node. So we can come up here and click save as shared node. So let's come here uh, and green. So let's dive, let's dive in here. So let's take the shot, nothing crazy, but we've just, uh, convert it to Rec 709, but we want the greens to look like the other shot. So all we're gonna do is right click, add another node, and then select our green node, and it'll bring our greens. So you can see the before and after. That is absolutely crazy, but it's a, it's a good representation of what it can do. And the other thing about this is that you can't actually make changes. So you can see here that I, I'm trying to drag it around, make some crazy changes, and as soon as I, click off and click back, nothing is actually applied. And that's because it's referencing at the point we save. So every time you add the shared node, it's gonna be at the point where you saved it. And you have to basically update it on a case by case basis. You just come over here, unlock the node, and then you can make all the changes that you want. This is a super handy thing to know when you are doing things like this and shifting colors ever so slightly or making really fine adjustments to one node. And then you can kind of bring it around in your project however you want. Here's another scenario where you can't use remote grades because these aren't all from the same clip, but I still want all these clips to roughly have the same grade. So one thing that we can do is select all our clips. I just held shift there to select them all and then add them into a group. So I'm gonna call this group sunset. Now you can see this little green link icon that's linking them all together and you get some new options up here. So if you hit this little drop down under clip, now you have some group pre-clip and group post-clip. These are where you're gonna make the changes to all the clips. So I'm in the group post-clip here and I just dropped a C-Log3 to Rec. 709 conversion and you can see that it applied this across all of the clips here. And why I did that is because it's basically applying your nodes and grades the way that it's laid out here. So. The pre-clip is obviously first, and then you can do a clip-by-clip -clip basis here, and then anything post-clip applies on top of everything. So if we go to the pre-clip here, and we mess around with just the offsets and the highlights, those changes will happen to all the clips, but they will happen before they hit that Rec. 709 LUT. And if you don't want to do that, you can just come up to clip, and now you get individual settings here. So let's just change this 
crazy. So you can see here, because I'm on clip up here, it's not affecting the other clips. But if I were to do that on the pre-clip, it does affect everything. So it, this is a really, really handy way to just group clips that are, you know, maybe they're all A roll, but there's a bunch of start and stops and you can just put a, a A roll group or you can do something like this that's just like all shot at the same time of day. You still have the ability to correct and uh, come in clip by clip. This maybe is my favorite way so far. Okay, so here's an example of a timeline that I could have been using group nodes, but I could also do it a quick and dirty way. And if you've ever edited in Premiere, you're likely familiar with this method, but if you come into effects and just drop an adjustment clip on your timeline, you can then grade the adjustment clip and drag that around and duplicate it to clips that are similar. So for this section, it's all a roll that I'm talking with and it's actually a couple of different takes all mixed together. And this is just a nice quick and dirty way to do it by dragging an adjustment layer. And the only thing I don't like about this method is that it's really easy to uh, lose your adjustment layer in the mix of everything. So you can see that it just kind of takes on the, uh, the still of whatever is underneath it, but it's really easy to lose it in the mix with everything else because you need to look out for just the label here. So just by copying over the grade from the clips, now everything is, you can see ungraded, but if we come back and we just drag it over, we have no problems now. That way, anytime something looks similar, like the clips over here, we can just keep continually dragging it. And likely at the end of an edit, you'll end up with something like this, but if you come into the color tab, it is a little more difficult to try to find where your actual adjustment clips are lying. So while I don't 100% recommend this method, if you're coming over from Premiere, this may make a little bit more sense to you in the first couple projects. Okay, so here is a great example. I could use an adjustment layer across my entire timeline, or I could just come into the color tab and I can switch over from clip right here to timeline. And this basically acts as an adjustment layer covering the entire timeline. So in this case, I'm using Dehancer to create a consistent mood or look across the entire timeline. And this is kind of the main way I do it. I'll come to the timeline and add, you know, just a finishing LUT and maybe drop it to like 15% opacity or just use the timeline for grain or halation, things like that. Just making an adjustment that works well across the entire timeline. And yeah, this is a great one to know for finishing touches. That's it for this one. Hope you learned something and see you in the next one. Peace.